In Chapter 6, Module 6, we'll be talking about polynomials. A term is a product of numbers and variables, and we talked about that a little bit in Module 2. A polynomial is a set of terms that are added or subtracted. A polynomial cannot have variables in the denominator of fractions. The variables cannot have negative exponents, and the variables cannot be inside square roots, or else it's a, not a polynomial. A monomial is a name for a polynomial with one term. A binomial is a name for a polynomial with two terms. A trinomial is a name for a polynomial with three terms. And anything more that has three, anything more than three terms is just called polynomial. Remember that a coefficient is the number that are in front of the variables. The degree of a term is the sum of the exponents that are on the variables, and the degree of the polynomial is the highest degree of its terms. Standard form for a polynomial is to write the polynomial with degrees of the terms from biggest to smallest. Now let's look at an example or two to talk about all these term, these words. It asks first, is the expression 7v to the 4th w to the 2nd a monomial? And the answer is yes. It's only got one term because there's nothing added or subtracted to it. The coefficient is the number in front. So the coefficient is 7. The degree, to get the degree, you look at the exponents. You add the exponents of the variables in that term together. So the degree of this term is 6. So here we have 8x to the 4th minus 6. It asks, is this a polynomial? And the answer is yes. We have things that are added or subtracted together. We don't have any variables in the denominators of fractions or inside square roots. So it's a polynomial. The next thing it says is write it in standard form. Well, it already is in standard form because the exponents go from biggest to smallest. Here we have an x with an x to the fourth, and here we don't have any letter at all. So that is standard form. Determine its degree. That's the next piece. So the degree of this term is 4 because that's the exponent on the letter. The degree on this term is 0 because there isn't a letter. So the degree of the polynomial is the biggest degree of its terms. So the degree here is 4. By the way, this, this problem has two terms, right? There's an 8x to the 4th and there's a minus 6. That's two terms. So this polynomial, more specifically, is called a binomial. So this problem asks, first of all, we have 6 n to the 3rd minus 2 fifths n to the 5th plus 4 n, asks if it's polynomial. And the answer is yes, it's a polynomial. We don't have, again, no letters in the denominator or inside square roots or anything funny. The next thing asks for us to write it in standard form. So standard form was the biggest exponent first. So this term that has the n to the fifth should really be written first. Then this term, if there's nothing in front of it, it's a positive, so we write plus 6 n to the third 
and then this term plus 4n. And that's in standard form now because the exponents on the variables get smaller. Then it says determine its degree. So the degree of this term is 5, the degree of this term is 3, and the degree on this term is 1 because we don't see an exponent there. So the degree of the polynomial is the biggest of those degrees. And then finally it says state if it's a monomial, binomial, trinomial. This has got three terms, we just talked about that, which means it's called, more specifically, a trinomial. Polynomials can be added or subtracted by removing the parentheses and then combining like terms. And then we talked about that in Module 2. So here, there's nothing to distribute to remove the parentheses, so we can just write it without the parentheses. And then we just combine the like terms. So this is a 3x squared, and here we want to add another 3x squared, so we get 6x squared. Here's a minus 5x, here's a plus 20x. Those are like terms because they both have x's, so this is 15x minus 5 plus 20. This 4 doesn't have an x, and this 10 doesn't have an x, minus 10. So 4 minus 10 is negative 6, and that's our answer. So this first set of parentheses doesn't have anything to distribute, so we can just write it without the parentheses. But in the second set of parentheses, this minus needs to be distributed. It's like having a negative 1 in front. It changes the signs for everything that's inside. So we need to write minus 3x squared y plus 3xy squared plus xy. Then we can combine things that might go together. Here's an x squared y, and here's an x squared y. So 8 minus 3 is 5x squared y. Here's an xy squared. Here's an xy squared. So we have plus 10 plus 3 gives us plus 13. And then here we have a 5xy plus xy. Remember this is like having 1xy, so 5 plus 1 is 6xy. Subtract this from this. Remember the from means this part has to go first, so we'll start by writing the problem. Then we need to look at our parentheses. There's nothing smashed against these parentheses, so we just drop them. But this minus needs to change all of those signs. So we have minus 7x squared minus 3x and then plus 8. And now we can combine things. When we write our answer, we want to write our answer in standard form though, so we want the thing that has the highest exponent first. So this 7x squared has got the highest exponent. Now there's no other x squareds in this problem, so there's nothing to combine it with, but we're going to write it first, minus 7x squared. And then we have this 2x minus 3x, so that's minus 1x. And then we have plus 17 plus 8, and that will be plus 25. So this is our answer down here. Usually we won't write that 1 in front of that x. We would just write minus x. It's okay if you write it there, it's not wrong. We just usually leave it out. This is another way to add polynomials. Sometimes it's easier if you do it up and down. If you match like terms up and down, it makes it maybe quicker. So you can see easily here that there's nothing to go with the 6n squared, so we just write 6n squared. And then these two are like terms, so we have minus 5 minus 3, or negative 5 minus 3, which is negative 8. 
and then these two go together to give us 5. This problem asks us to evaluate the polynomials for x equals 0. Remember that just means we're going to stick in 0 in place of x. And we'll do it every time we have an x, we'll put it in parentheses. So there's an x and there's an x. So we're going to have 2, and then instead of x, we're going to write 0, and that's squared, minus 6. And instead of x, we'll write 0, plus 7. So remember, order of operations says we do 0 times 0 first, which is just 0, and then times 2, which is still 0. 6 times 0 is 0, so we end up with just 7.